Good day, everybody. Welcome to Wessex Ways podcast with me, Paul Whitewick, and... And me, Headley Thorne. Did, well, did you like that intro, Headley? I thought I'd try a new style of intro. It, it works quite well. <laughs> Let's. Should we just get the music on now? <laughs> okay. Yay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we, we, it's like we've done this before, Hadley. I think we're, we're, well, we've we're done leading. this nine times before. So this oh, is episode wow. 10. Um, the viewers and listeners will already know what I'm going to be talking about. You don't, as usual. We, we have that, um, that fun ahead of us, so to speak. <clears throat> um, so what we usually do on these podcasts um, is Paul and I talk a little bit about places in Wessex, uh, Paul's speciality is our kind of post-industrial or industrial stuff like old canals and railways and yeah, I, and I, I'd, I'd like to say anything that involves a route, anything that involves an A to B a good way from it. days gone by. And I like anything that's pretty, hills, paths, trees, <laughs> lakes, uh, all the the other sort of stuff. So, what what have you been up to these last two weeks, Paul? <clears throat> well, I've been I've been doing my usual YouTubing. Um, and I've been I've been slowing things down a little bit. I've been trying to um, up my game. I've been trying to research. What are you drinking, Headley? What are you drinking? Well, okay. Usually, when we do these podcasts, I have one of these beers to lessen the impact. But the problem is, I've had my son back from university, and clearly he's taken all the best beers, and I'm left with something called Pilsner Zero Percent Alcohol Free. <laughs> um, Great. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to lessen any pain today, Ed. What's the No, way? it's not, is it? It's not. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, uh, you, you, rudely, you rudely interrupted yourself, Paul. Carry I on. did rudely interrupt myself. Now, what have we done? We've, we've done a video called um, Why 45 Villages in Wiltshire Just Disappeared. Mm. Mm. And it was something I've been meaning to do for a long time. It was essentially an excuse to go and visit a lot of abandoned settlements. Mm. Have a look on any old, old OS map. And you'll see abandoned medieval village, abandoned settlement. And I've been meaning to do it for years and years. And I just thought, you know, I've kind of I've kind of researched a lot of these different villages. And I tried to try and piece it together and see how they all linked. But basically, they, they don't. There's a thousand different reasons why there's no longer a, a village where it was. But it was an excuse to go and visit some of these and try and make a nice immersive video from it. So um, mm. that's kind of what we've been doing. I think we visited maybe nearly up to 15 of these abandoned settlements and it was it, it joyous looks like a lot of effort went into that video it, it was <clears throat> it was different to your pre- previous offerings not to say that they yeah. didn't have a lot of effort put in but it was clear this time round that you i don't know it was different it was it was it was the editing was really really good and it just seemed yeah not not to you know blow mm. too much smoke so to speak but yeah enjoyed that one no we, we we've, we've been sat on the treadmill for years literally five years 275 videos we've made and i'm not learning because i'm just what's the phrase i'm too busy chopping mm. the trees to sharpen my axe mm. yeah, if that yeah. makes sense and yeah. and i'm not learning anything i'm just bashing video out video out video and i just thought you know i need to learn some more skills i need to learn some more sort of editing skills i need to story tell better because that's mm. what i enjoy watching and i want to make that video so i thought i'm going to slow the videos down a little bit and yeah hopefully it came across that um we tried to tell a better story and also up the editing game as well. And again, the next video is going to be about Silchester or Tadley Cleaver or Cleaver mm. Atrobatum. And again, yeah. I've really tried to up the game, particularly with yeah. the story and how yeah. it all kind of links full circle. So um, yeah, that's been my life for the last three or four weeks, to be fair. What, what are yours? Well, probably not quite as exciting as that, to be honest with you. I've, <laughs> I've done my usual uh, slug of trips. Well, actually... Before I go on to the little trips I've been doing locally, I've, I've kind of, um, I, I've decided that now I'm kind of nearing the end of my midlife. I haven't actually had a decent crisis yet. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, being unfaithful is not on my list. So Have you I've bought a looking... sports car, Headley? No, kind of, I haven't you know, quite that... got that kind of money, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, what, what I am looking at is, is motorbikes. Oh. And uh, I know... Um, you know, and um, I've been looking at um, 
cruiser bikes like a, i think it's a kawasaki vulcan s is what i'm currently looking at and so that was good fun so mm. went down to have a look at those and with the intention of you know tearing up the countryside in a not too loud kind of manner um so the for, things that, for, the, for the layman of motor, yeah. what is the difference between a cruiser and a normal motorbike okay so you got uh so let me give you a difference between a sports bike and a uh, cruiser bike so a sports bike is one of those ones where it's fast it's noisy it's yeah. aerodynamic you have your head down they're built for going as fast as possible and they make lots of noise um and they rev quite high a cruiser bike is the opposite it's upright you've got your hands right up here um you sit back it's it's like getting onto a cruiser bike is like getting onto a comfortable sofa okay and uh you know you see a lot of <clears throat> fat americans riding them and um I look dangerously like that when I got on, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. but, uh, am, am I right? Have you ever seen um, uh, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman? Yeah. Is, it, yeah. is that the kind of bike I'm thinking of? No, they, they use sort of touring bikes. They had BMW, right. so they're quite upright. They're designed to carry a lot of stuff over a long distance, whereas a cruising bike is kind of yeah, sort of laid back kind of. Am I almost thinking like Harley Davidson type yeah. thing? You know what I mean? Yeah, like a proper... yeah like that. Yeah, the, so the one I'm looking at is a less extreme version of that. Yes. It's kind of the more beginner version, but I've got cool. lots of tests and stuff to do first, obviously, so it's a bit of a long-term thing. Right um, So I visited Temple Island near Henley on the way back from work a couple of times uh, to try and get some nice shots there. Um, that's always fun. I love Temple Island. It's yep. gorgeous. Um, not, I'm, I'm including it in this. I think it's... I don't think it's Wessex actually. I think it's kind of Mercia, but um, it's it's a beautiful place to visit. And I used to work near there as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> not too far from that. Today we went up to Nuffield, up in the Chilterns, to walk around the woods there and look at the bluebells. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they're obscenely bright at the moment. I mean, it is literally yeah. like a yeah. blue carpet at the moment. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, I did a photo shoot over in Letcombe Bassett. Um, over the other side of Wantage, so just west of Want Wantage, uh, near the, the Devil's Punch Bowl there, not the one at Hindhead, but the one near Letcombe Bassett, um, just under the Ridgeway. And it couldn't have been nicer. It, it was a client photo shoot. Yeah. So, you know, charge a small amount of money, um, go along with a drone and take some pictures of, you know, someone's house. And yeah. as luck would have it, it was the most beautiful sunset I'd seen in ages. And uh, the pictures... Oh, they just came out so well Brilliant. i spent three days editing the pictures for you know just a few small quid but to be honest with you i enjoy doing it that's the fun, I, isn't it? that's it it's mm. fun you know it's, it's not my main job so i can just be a bit more relaxed about it and mm. just try and get the best end result possible but it was easy that one because the sunset was great it yeah. was just it was absolutely beautiful um we did a walk my son and i eldest son and i uh did a walk up lowbury hill um, probably nine as a 10 mile walk I think it was uh, and at the top the wind was we, we measured 62 miles an hour Yeah. and it was, it was wind that kind of wind that's so strong that you can't breathe yeah. when you're walking into it it was it's kind of yeah. it, you can't communicate you can't breathe even the snuggest items of clothing are trying to pull you backwards <laughs> uh, absolutely brilliant walk uh, he and I were laughing up there it was brilliant a couple of trips to Blue Burton Hill, which is my local hill fort. I've uh, got a few pictures there. Yep. Um, went to a place called Bix Bottom, uh, again near Henley. And okay. uh, funny name aside, it's uh, there's an abandoned village there, uh, something you probably know more about uh -huh. than myself. But what is still there are the ruins of the church, St. James's. Oh, uh, I saw your... Again. Snug, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a great picture. Valley. That's. I need to wow. visit there because that's wonderful, right? It's 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 a difficult place to get a bad picture, <laughs> you know, before I take too much credit. Um, it's a very beautiful place, a, a haven for walkers as well. Mm. Um, then I went again with my son for another walk uh, over to Whitehorse Hill at Uffington and Wayland Smithy, which yep. um, many people know is very old, uh, Long Barrow, Neolithic, um, f over five and a half thousand years old. Mm. Which is incredible. I mean, yep. it's a couple of thousand years old in the pyramids. It's three and a half thousand years before the birth of Christ, etc., etc. I mean, it really, really seriously old. Actually predates the Ridgeway. I think it was built not long after West Kennet, Long Barrow in Wiltshire. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And 
obviously, you know, similar sort of thing. Um, but it's lovely because if anyone hasn't been to Wayland Smithy, make the trip because it's beautiful. It's surrounded by trees. It's an extraordinarily quiet place. And all you can hear is the rustle of the trees and the occasional distant rumble of a Boeing 777 on hmm. westerlies from Heathrow. Um, and yeah, um, and went somewhere else, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Sounds, you, well, you've been fairly busy, to be fair, I think. Um, any, any other news have we got? I, 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 well, one thing I wanted to mention, which is um, hmm. the guys from Hidden uh, Wiltshire podcast. About, yes, is a they're back. It's a Jewish podcast. That is. If you haven't listened to it already, go and listen to yeah. Hidden Wiltshire. Yes. Um, I think they were joined by a guest as well this week. I well, think. I think she's permanent. It's Elaine Perkins. Oh, so uh, you've got Paul Timlett um, and... Uh, you know, Glyn Coy, and it's, I mean, I've, I've always been a big fan of Hidden Wiltshire. Um, mm. They're bigger distribution than us, so, you know, we mention them, I doubt they mention us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just on the off chance they're listening, well done, guys, uh, welcome return. Um, and, yeah, they're, they're great. So the three of them, they were talking about, um, I think they were talking about uh, nature reserves uh, around yeah. Wiltshire on the last one is really engaging and mm. Elaine's a welcome addition as well she's very active on their Facebook page and yeah. so it was kind of she was kind of a, a natural person to select as the third presenter so mm. yeah absolutely brilliant yeah, yeah. good news good news yeah. um, we've got some we'll probably do this at the end uh, like we did last time but we've got comments to read out from YouTube so this yep. for anyone new this podcast goes out on Spotify Apple thingy Android thingy and also on YouTube um, where we have a relatively small audience but we have some they're very engaging and we have comments and we do try to read comments out from the YouTube uh, videos so we'll read last episode's comments this time round at the end and I think we also got some Twitter stuff today as well well yeah um, well, well so well, yeah indeed yeah I think with that we've got two facets now to this um this podcast number one mm. So if we split this in two, number, number, number one, we asked a question earlier on our social media. Any questions for us? Anything you want to talk about specifically? Mm. So, and we've got a whole bunch of random questions, which is, mm. and I've been reading through these questions. They're great. So if we have a look at that first, yeah, and then sure. I think um, you've got something specific to talk about, Headley, so we can yeah. play that wonderful game that everybody loves where I try and guess where you're talking about. You've got your 0% beer, so that's going to help you oh, through the, through the week, pain. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that game. Oh. It's such a fun game. No, it's not. Um, what's uh, <laughs> what are the uh, what? Are the... Oh, and just before we go, anyone watching on YouTube this week might notice a bit oh, of a yeah. difference that Paul and I are cohabiting in some strange outdoor place with a uh, oh, yeah. fire just there. Um, we've switched from Teams to Zoom uh, to try that out, and uh, I'm. I mean, I'm bigger than you in real life, but I'm much bigger than you on here because, <laughs> you know, the, the camera is clearly closer. So it's a bit strange. You, I feel, you I feel look, like look, we're look, in... Look like my pet. Look. <laughs> I feel like we're in someone's back garden. Not mine yeah. or yours. So potentially, I don't know, I feel like we're a little bit of an American back garden. We've got some autumnal yeah. leaves in the background, a fireplace yeah. in the middle, hmm. um, which is weird. But yeah, we're making it good. sound much nicer for the Spotify listeners. Than the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, right, you're, not, what, you're what? not missing out, people. You're not missing out. <laughs> what have you got from uh, Twitter? Well, then? so we've got all these wonderful questions out. Um, so I put them out on Twitter and my um, Facebook profile as well, which I use for the YouTube um, videos. So where to start? First question, Lindsay Proctor. Why is a canal lock called a lock? Where does that where does that come from? Why lock? So that's a fascinating question. Is it because the gates lock shut? Well, no. Apparently, I, I will admit that I had a quick Google of this in terms of um, the etymology of it, and because uh, I thought, well, you know, there's loads of different meanings of where the word lock came from. But as you suggest, mm. it's always to do with a padlock or locking something. But there is an old English word, um, and it used to, I think it was just L O C. And it meant an enclosure or a mm. barrier. Um, and then that led in time due to a specific meaning, a barrier on a stream. So the first locks weren't the traditional locks that we know them today, which open and close, two or one door. Mm. They were stop locks. 
it's sort of just where you just slotted it down to try and stop a, a head of water or keep a head of water for your, for your boat or your vessel. And uh, yeah, that was referred to as a lock because it was putting this the, the barrier on this section of water. So that was quite interesting. Hmm. And what else have we got? Um, Alison Morris. Now, my son goes to Portway School and asks why it's called Portway School. Does it lead to the sea? The school has a will for its logo and it said because that they found an ancient cartwheel on the site of the school. So I've assumed Alison comes from my hometown, which is Andover, because we have the Portway School. And a very corner, cool, if you have a look on a map, I'm going to screen share now, Hedley, actually. How do okay, I do this that? Is hopefully not going to go wrong, because hopefully we've not going to go tested wrong. this beforehand. Yes. So, uh, if you go onto an OS map um, and you look at the Roman road called the Portway, mm. it goes through the back of Portway School. So that all adds up. Um, why is it called the Portway? Well, I guess no one's really going to know, but I think that supposedly was named, the route was named during Saxon times. So the word port in Roman uh, comes from portus, which does mean port, harbour. So obviously it wasn't a word that was used for Romans. They, they um, what's now known as Devil's Highway and Portway. Hmm. Um, so... It was obviously after the Roman period it was called, referred to as the portway, apparently Saxon. And the port in that sense could be any sort of market town. So you've got Millbourne Port, for example, which is nowhere near the sea. It just meant mm. market town. And um, it's not canals or rivers or anything. It's it's literally no. any any sort of trading yeah, area. Yeah, because port also could mean to carry. So you get a, in the hospitals, you get a porter. Mm. Hence where the word came from as well. So it could mean to carry okay, yeah, yeah. to carry between two marketplaces. Um, mm. And of course, you've got a few market routes on that um, there. Now, interestingly, I walked part of the portway the other day, the Caesars Belt section, um, mm. halfway between Andover and Silchester. That looks, that looks hilly. It, it's very hilly, mm. um, but it's also gorgeous as well. It's really lovely. Mm. And all the way up there, all the way up this section of the portway, mm. you can see the Roman road. As clear as you like, a really lovely peak of an agar, at least three feet off of the sort of the natural landscape. Um, oh, okay. I, I will share some pictures because I took a lot of pictures, so I'll mm. share some pictures on top of this as well for those the benefit of um, YouTube. Mm. Um, but it's good, it's gorgeous, and that's one of the only bits that you can see at the portway. Unfortunately, this side, um, <clears throat> I parked my car up down here next to the A34 and walked all up the hill, all the way across to this road here and there's just a wonderful section um oh i know where that is yes yeah yeah lovely walk guys yeah so hopefully that answers that question was from alison morris um via her son or her son oh. asked the question leo age four and he loves our videos because he um he says oh, i've been there and i've been there because obviously a lot of local <laughs> which is which is great so um yeah i said keep keep leo asking questions that's great stuff and hopefully that explains leo why your school is called the portway because it's named after an ancient route um not just um the portway itself the roman road but potentially even older than the roman road would have been a route there mm. linking the um the, the sort of the tribal towns um so, atrabati hi leo yeah great stuff great love that great yeah. um what else have we got? A question that you're going to ask this question, Hedley. Um, uh, no, I haven't got it in front of me. Um, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask the question and you can ask okay. it. How's that for pressure? Um, okay. Shall I unshare for the moment? We'll go back I can, to... I can, if it's one of the ones on Twitter, hang on, I've got... Uh, oh, it is, I, yes. Yeah, so I can do, actually. Is it the one from either Chris Humphreys or Wimbledon Fields? Well, either. If you're confident about okay. either, you can do <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. The second one's definitely yours. So we'll start with uh, Chris Humphreys. So he says, I'm often interested in gaps. Do you have any thoughts on the largest area in Wessex without a footpath in the widest sense, including old roads, bridle paths, etc.? If so, is there an explanation for their absence? Oh, wow. Um, that's, a, that's a big question with a lot of potential answers, isn't it? I guess. That is, that is. Um, I mean, you've got the obvious Salisbury Plain, 
but that's a little bit too obvious but, uh, yeah, the, because obviously the reason for that is because well there are paths across it and the, you when the the red flags aren't flying i don't know I'm just gonna. I should put a legal disclaimer in it. Isn't I? <laughs> I think when the red flags are not flying, that you can use the footpaths. But um, that's probably one for Hidden Wiltshire. Um, I know lots of wide areas, but they've all got footpaths. So I was thinking the Unhill Valley near here, a uh, big, wide, open valley, huge place, but it has got a footpath going through it. Um, that's a real place if you want to feel on your own. That's a great yeah. place to go. Um, I was thinking also in Wiltshire, uh, over in Wiltshire, um, no, I was thinking near Tan Hill and Milk Hill to the south, a big wide valley there, but that's going to be, that's going to be riddled with footpaths and there's certainly a canal towpath. Yeah. I think, I think in the south of England, that's a, that's a difficult ask. The, you, yeah. <laughs> everywhere so, I think of Wiltshire. has got a footpath. Yeah. yeah. There's lots of big, wide, open areas. So, you know, I'm thinking like Lowbury Hill, but then you've got the Ridgeway. So, mm. again, that's right in the middle of nowhere. And I can't think of any bigger, wider, open space than that, than potentially Cher Hill and, again, Milk Tan Hill. But there, there's footpaths and, of course, Wandstike and everything there as well. Yeah. So yeah. no is the answer. I can't... I don't hear there's a lot, is there, really? I don't no. you know, I think... Yeah, outside of sort of obvious, mm. you know, random top, topography areas, which often mm. tend to be certainly in Wiltshire, um, downlands, which are then marked as open access. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult to sort of um, yeah think of anything obvious outside of Salisbury mm. Plain. I have a funny feeling going back to Salisbury Plain. I have a funny feeling it's split into two, right? Mm. Got almost split into two, and yeah. the eastern side, I think, is a side that you can walk when mm. the flags are down because I've done it yeah. myself. We've gone, yeah. we've parked up in um, Tidworth on the west side of Tidworth near the golf course. Yeah. And you can walk up onto the plane there. And when the flags are down, as you say, mm. you can walk for miles. And it's, just, again, it's a very desolate, eerie kind of place. Cause you feel like you shouldn't be there. You yeah. feel like, you feel like you're about to be looking down the wrong end of a challenge. Yeah, to totally. And do you know what? Yeah. So my daughter used to horse ride there as well. There was a stable right on the edge, and she um, loaned uh, loaned this horse for want of a better word. Mm. And we used to, I used to get on my bike. She used to go on the horse, and we used to go off on, on parts of the plane. Now, mm. even I, I tell you what, I'll get a map up here, and I'm going to share again, Eddie, because this is this is truly fascinating. What we saw, um, screen share, map, um, share. Right. So again, picture yourself. You're in for the, the for the benefit of the people listening on the podcast, not YouTube. Uh, to the west of Tidworth. So we used to come out of Tidworth mm-hmm. and here. Right, you can see that, Eddie, yeah? So you can see yep. the red lines there, the red, obviously, a danger area. We yep. used to happily walk or, and cycle and horse ride into mm. this section here, all over here. Okay. Flags would be along the red is line. That, is that near Luggershaw? Yes, because Tidworth's yeah. here and Luggershaw oh, yeah, is yeah, just, okay. there's yeah, Luggershaw. Yeah. Yeah. My ancestors come from Luggershaw. Luggershaw okay. Castle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to live in Luggershaw. Mm. Uh, I used to live in Luggershaw for about ten years. For my sins. Yeah. So to check I, we're not related. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the question. Um, although there's a lot of houses gone up lately, Hedley. I think Tidworth cool. is now like the fourth biggest population in, in Wiltshire. So yeah, we we kind of used to go all the way down here across um now again, Nine Mile River. All mm. this area here, the old Marlborough Road look. Um, oh, yeah. all this area here you, you can go in that area this is on the east side of the plain and there's a lot um, of tumuli there as well a there's lot loads of old oh, yeah. and, yeah. and and the good thing is the really good thing is with this part of the plain they have marked all the all the tumuli they've marked all these long barrows mm. with with huge great signs saying no tanks no tanks so they are looking after it and I, I, mm. they are looking after the heritage and they're looking after all these tumuli that haven't been dug, haven't been mm. researched. And I think that's a really good thing. So the army are being sensible in terms of the use of the land there. They're not just destroying mm. um, all these earthworks. Um, yeah. That may hold a lot of secrets one day when people have time to, to look at them. Then I think if you head to the um, further west, you've got another danger area again where you can walk. But then mm. you get to... Where are we? Till Z, Till Z, this side. 
Now, yeah. this is the side where you can't... This is where Imber is right in the middle. The Imber range, yeah. The Imber okay. range. I don't mm. think you can go there at all mm. unless it's on one of the days, the four or five days of the year in which it's open. Um, yeah. Whether that's New Year's Day and they have a couple of days in August. Um, and you can either get the bus or you can walk from Warminster. And uh, last year, me and my son got the bus, one of the old buses, mm. all the way down into Imber. Um, but I'm pretty confident, yeah, you can't walk on this any time of the mm. year um, unless it's mm. on one of the days. Um, mm. But yeah, so I, I guess that would answer the question. That's that's the biggest area, clearly, I can think of. It's sort of 10 by 6 kilometres. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, you'd have to scale around quite a lot to find anywhere, any square kilometre where you can't walk or take a path, I would yeah. guess. Yeah, and um, I can't... I mean, there's a lot of private land, but... Even that has got footpaths going through it. I mean, a lot of the mm. land around to the southeast of here, I think, is owned by James Dyson. Um, oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. I was going to call him the Hoover Man. You can't call him that. That's a <laughs> brand. But, um, but again, there's footpaths all across his land, and you mm. you wouldn't know it's private. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. I'm just again, I'm just looking at sort of Samanac Forest. Mm, yeah. Um, looks looks incredibly private with no footpaths, but actually, you can walk where you like. Um, yeah thousand year old ancient um forest passed down through 27 generations of family and as mm. long as you're respectful and do all the normal sensible things you can walk wherever you want i think you can there's you can mountain bike through some of it as well oh, can you really i, I right. might be wrong but i believe there's bridal ways there i've seen i've seen yeah. people doing it on youtube but that doesn't mean it's allowed i suppose yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so that was that was that question which we answered not successfully, probably, or slash maybe no, moderately well, I think successful. We've, we've gone down the road. So the second one, and this is, yeah, this is definitely for you, this one, Paul. You, so you say is, that because it's got the word railway in it, Headley. That's it, though, isn't it? <laughs> that's it. I'm out when you, you know, I, I love them, but uh, you know what. So this is from Wimbledon Field, says, when the Southampton and Dorchester Railway was being built in 1846-7, to seven, the navvies cutting the line into Dorchester or Dunavaria, unearthed an impressive Roman mosaic. It was widely reported, including in the Illustrated London News, but what happened to it? I'm... Oh, is this the one that's at Little Coat House? Is it? I've got a clue. I don't know. Um, the only place... I mean, there's going to... They did dig underneath. This isn't for the Dorchester and Southampton. Well, that wouldn't be a Little Coat House, would it? Because... Where's Little Coat House? Hang on a minute, because that would be the Little Coat House... I mean, the um, Southampton to Dorchester would be this side of Dorchester. So Southampton to Dorchester okay. Railway, I think 1847, something like that. And yeah. uh, built in different sections. They had the, the biggest trouble they had was building the tunnel under Southampton. Mm. Um, they had to take the train for it by road over the top of Southampton Hill mm. to get to the other side because the biggest issue they had with the Southampton Tunnel was there was already a tunnel there built by the canal 50 years ago. But yeah. it was never successful. It didn't actually open. The contractors were all sacked because it was a real mess. So, it, And they built the railway tunnel a foot above it. And, of course, it kept yeah. on collapsing into the tunnel. And I think a BBC mm. building collapsed into it in the 1970s. Um, yeah. Hence why they were always repairing it. But Yeah. So I the Little Coat know. one, is, it was actually at Little Coat House. Obviously, it's, it was um, it was excav excavated in, or was discovered, 1727 to 1728. Wow. By William George. That's uh, quite a discovery. That if you've seen yeah. it, it's amazing. Okay. It really is. It's, is it called the the Orpheus mosaic? I think. Yeah. Right. Pretty. So much. this one in particular, then that Wimbledon Fields has suggested, mm. was in Dorchester or pretty close to it. Mm. I mean that makes sense, obviously, yeah. clearly. But yeah, I, I know nothing about it. Where did that get to? I wonder if they discovered it and then didn't do anything with it because. Well, should we open it up to the listeners? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Probably, there might be people there sitting there going, "Oh, I know, I know." Yeah, and, and we don't because these questions we've had no preparation for. They've just come out of the blue. So, mm. um, yeah, if you know about that mosaic, then either put it in the comments below or you're listening um, anywhere on Apple, Google, Spotify. Then just send us a message on Twitter, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, mm. I I haven't been to Dorchester enough. I've only ever sort of been once, mm. and obviously you've got the wonderful Maiden Castle to the southwest. Yeah, and you've got a lovely. There's a last time I went to Maiden Castle, 
just to the north of it, there's a field full of uh, sunflowers. And okay. they've cut a maze into it. Oh, um, wow. f from the air, it looked amazing. I went up the, the Hog Hill to the left of it to take off because obviously Maiden Castle itself, as you can see within that boundary, is... Uh, I think it's, it's either English Heritage or National Trust. Either way, they don't like drone pilots. So um, No, I mean, um, I always sneak in, got my drone up. But it, I, do you know what, I, th I think because it, it's so big, there's yeah. no one about. You know, so, and it is uh, it's yeah. properly big, isn't it? It's, it's mad, absolutely mad. It's, inc it's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where if I'm photographing a hill fort from above, I, I go back you know, a couple of hundred metres, like Uffington, you can take off from the just near the Ridgeway and you can yeah. get it all in just by flying the drone back a few metres. Maiden Castle, you're flying halfway across England just yeah. to get it in. It's yeah. an incredible, huge place. I mean, it's a, that's a kilometre in, in diameter there. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, and, and, and have you did you ever see the um, aqueduct? No. Because that's, no. Yeah, honestly, Hadley, it's, you, you should go again and look at the aqueduct. Oh, there it is, yeah. You can just tell from a map when you're looking at a nice countryside, can't you? Yeah. Look at those, those lines and look at the, the valleys. Yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. It is. And you look can look at that church bottom yeah. there. <clears throat> yeah, we parked uh, up here somewhere where the pier is well, probably. South over bottom, that looks good as well. Yeah, and you can walk all around it. It's just a really beautiful landscape, as you say. Really, really beautiful landscape. Right. Old settlements, old villages, probably a whole, all sorts to see down here. Um, uh, you see, I think we're going to have to do Wessex Airscapes 2025 in either Dorset or Somerset. Yeah. That looks good. Well, I, I highly recommend mm. um, Dorset or Dorchester. Uh, I, I think I've sidetracked quite a lot there, Eddie, to be fair. No, I've been I'm, I've been captivated. I do like I do like sidetracking and waffling and all yeah. that, um, any old um, bits mm. and pieces. But yeah, yeah. Right, that, that is all the questions done for the week. Uh, I thought that was quite an interesting little feature, yeah. actually, if we asked. So I, I quite like that. Maybe we should do that before each podcast. Yeah. Um, so what we do is we've had comments on YouTube as well, but let's push those to the end to, yep. to break it up a little bit. Do you do you have any other subjects? No, I, I'm I'm right. I mean, we've we've had we've we've killed thirty five minutes of people's time yeah, so far. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy so, if you want to move so on to th those still listening. Then maybe we can move on to my <laughs> subject. This is where we do the uh, the uh, thrilling chase across Wessex, yeah, where do. you try and find. Look at you smiling, look. You really love this. I yeah. know you love this. I know I, you love doing this. I'm going to start in Dorchester today. Seeing as it's, okay. I mean, why not? We're so here already, aren't we? We are. Dorchester is a town. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> trying to kill that one. Hey. <laughs> Go well, on then. We're we'll starting Dorchester. Do you want to, uh, so you're down south, so you're going to have to move north. I'm going to have to move north. Right, OK. Well, I won't yeah. get on the Southampton and Dorchester Railway. I'll get on the the, the one that went up to Yeovil, shall I? Um, mm. And you can catch Whatever. a train that goes underneath um, that fortification there. Oh, wow. Apparently. So there we go. Um, right, I'll carry on heading this way. Somewhere around here, there's a branch line to, yeah, uh, Maiden Newton. Now, Maiden means new, doesn't it? Yeah. So new new town. There we go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to sidetrack again, sorry. I, but... I think you probably want to avoid going too far west i think you want to sort of head oh up, i see what you're saying i see what you're saying north a little bit okay yeah. so i won't you know I, i'm gonna sidetrack because i don't actually know where that is but i'm guessing that's fine I'll, yeah uh, made a new and had the branch the bridport branch and yeah. it doesn't look like you can do anything with that dismantled railway that cuts across the landscape but you can now cycle from made mm. newton station all the way down to bridport on this um okay which is wonderful and you get all the way down here, and I'm going to show you something mm. fascinating here. Yeah. Where is it? Down there. Right, now, there's a yeah. lovely nature reserve here. It's a beautiful bit of land. But guess what? Our friends at National Highways want to demolish that bridge. Huh? Really? Classic, because they say it's unsafe. Okay. It's not unsafe. I've seen it myself with my own eyes. But there we go. Well, go and get it's, some pictures there before it goes. Yeah. It, I, and again, in terms of landscapes, Headley. The single most scariest drive you'll yeah. do in the south of England yeah. is if you follow that road south up mm. here and you go along to that hill fort there, Egdon yeah. Hill, yeah. you can drive along one of the, uh, is it the Valent, the Univalent, the actual um, structures, the peaks of that hill fort, because it's a road and it's, look at the drop to the north. 
I'm just looking at the job to the south as well. I mean, both sides. Yeah. Well, that's a hill contour fort. lines, isn't it? That's so a hill Egerton fort. Hill. Egerton Hill. Okay. You can drive along here, and if you drive along yeah. there, you're driving along one of the the valance, the one of the fortifications of that hill fort. Wow. And if you okay. meet a car coming the other way, good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless you're on that, a motorbike. Well, yeah, and even then you'd be struggling. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, it's quite bonkers, right? Uh, back on track. Right, you want to go? Track, really. You want to go north northeast? North northeast. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to get off the. I well, tell you what. Let's let's crack on with the uh, the train because it's we're heading more mm. north now. That's fine. Uh, Yetminster, funny little town. Hey, Yeovil, Yeovil. There we go. Right. Right. Stop. Stop at Yeovil. Get off at Yeovil. Equipment. Are you suggesting that perhaps I get on a train oh, at Yeovil and head? Yeah, it? you get off at Yeovil and you want to head back on the west of England. Maybe. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Oh, this is. <laughs> Painful. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, we haven't got a bleeper on here, but I think that was a mild one. Um, <laughs> Yeovil, uh, I'm kind of lost. Hang on. Uh, well, what, I'm, I'm getting on the train. Yeah, yeah, got it, the train's got it, got going. It. So I'm now just you, got, I'm, you want to go northeast now. Right. Well, I'm on the West of England main line. Okay. And I'm heading so, northeast. Okay, head northeast, and where Abbas are you now? Coombe. I'm nearly at Temple Coombe, Nearly. Okay. Or am I? No, I'm not near Temple Coombe, Ignore that. I'm at Gillingham. Okay. Gillingham, stop a minute. Uh, okay. Plenty of different routes I could do here because I could get on the old B3092 and head north to Mir mm. because just north of Mir there's a beautiful set of hills. Yeah, why not go to Mir? Uh, Mir. White Sheet Hill. Yeah, go to Mir. All right. If you can I've get gone to Mir. Okay, so from Mir. Um, I've got the yeah, A3 you want to head three. north. You you need to sort of head north. Okay. From well, here, maybe a bit northeast, but that's fine. around there somewhere. There's a tunnel. Hmm. I don't know where it is. Um. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Heading north, White Sheet Hill, gorgeous. Um. Yes. Lots Keep of open going. access land there. Gonna crack on here. There's a um, little knoll, little knoll, and long knoll. Beautiful, two beautiful hills. Hmm. Um. I've got some lovely pictures of those with the, with a the mist hey. in there. Uh, Maiden Bradley. Slow, slow down a bit. Ooh. Slow down a bit. Slow Ooh. down a bit. Oh, Maiden Bradley. I don't know if you, you might have overshot there. I don't really? know. Hang on. I uh, know oh, you haven't overshot. So head. Keep going. Keep right. going. Okay. Uh, Longleat. We're nearly at Longleat. Oh, you are. You're. You're. You're very close. Getting close now. Okay. Very close. If you're at Longleat. Well, we're nearly. I mean, no, I'm nearly at Froome. Hmm. Might want to. I think you need to need to go a little bit east. East, uh, Warminster, Warminster direction. Oh, you're very, very close. Oh, oh okay. you're red hot. So between the two, bases. they'll stop. Oh, oh, you between, between. See. Yeah, so Warminster, go west. You're okay. walking out of Warminster. God, we're going to get there soon. Oh, we're, we're <laughs> Clay Hill. Oh, welcome. Oh, welcome to Clay Hill. Him. Lovely. Yeah, no, I've never been yes. there, but it looks fortified. Yes, it's it's amazing. So. Before I talk about Clay Hill, I wanted to look just look at the the the, yeah. the um, contour lines for a start. Very interesting place. So before I go on to that, I just want to mention before I forget, um, if this goes out early May, which I think it will, yep. uh, we've got Oxfordshire Art Weeks and there's going to be a load of really good artists and myself with a few photographs at the Earth Trust at Little Whitnam from the 7th to a I think 14th um i'm going to be there half of the days uh but obviously anyone who fancies a walk up whitnam clumps and maybe also look at some artwork then highly recommend you come i'm not trying to sell my stuff in any way um but you know come along it's gonna be good and i believe we're gonna have a really good coffee van i'm told i'm really i'm assured <laughs> Um, we start on the day of the king's coronation, which should mean that no one turns up. Right, <laughs> Clay Hill. Let me Clay just get my Hill, Clay, Clay Hill. spelled C L E Y. It is. It's two hundred and forty meters, or two hundred and thirty-nine. It says on there, um, or eight hundred and one feet above sea level, and it's a triple S I, so site of special scientific interest. It's right on the Somerset. Wiltshire border um, yep. and it's got on top of it a Uni Valley Hill Fort, Iron Age Hill Fort um, and it is I believe owned by the National Trust so uh, obviously uh, you're not allowed to fly drones or anything on the site <clears throat> um, 
it's 66 acres um it's chalk grassland very prominent hill um and uh, overlooks warminster to the east um and you can see absolutely miles in every direction from the map you can just see yeah how prominent it is with the surrounding area well there's um, nothing else is there yeah <laughs> yeah really? uh, the two barrows on top there's two kind of i think they're bowl or bell barrows on top right on top that is so they built them absolutely on the highest point uh, legend has it that the hill was formed by the devil uh when he dropped <laughs> When he dropped a sack of earth uh, with which he had originally planned to bury the town of Devizes. <laughs> Did <laughs> call was clearly a small village back then. Um, but again, I think there's citation needed on that. Um, the other two, the other thing we should know about, and I'll go into a little bit more detail in a bit, is that Clay Hill is a UFO sighting hotspot. I mean, properly. Um, and we, I'll, I'll do that bit a little bit separate. I'll just talk a little bit about our trip there before we go into mm. US, UFOs. So we, uh, before the Wessex Airscapes exhibition we're doing uh, from July, we wanted to get one more uh, trip into a special place in Wiltshire. And you can't really get more special than Clay Hill. It's wonderful. Mm. So if you look at the map, you've got a path uh, going up to it from the south. And there's a little reservoir. And the car park is there, the big blue P. So uh, for people who are not watching on YouTube, you get off the main road and the car park is right there. It's a small car park, but you can probably park about 10 cars there. And then you walk down to the Mid Wilts Way. Wonderful footpath. Also a very good place to launch a drone to take pictures of Clay Hill. Um, and uh, yeah, after we've done that, went up onto the hill itself. So the bottom of Clay Hill is kind of, it looks like a chalk quarry. Uh, it's, you'll, yeah. you'll see from the pictures that we, that I send you to put on here, yep. that it's kind of, it's got little steep paths, which you need to climb up using all fours. Um, mm. And it's got a big sort of coombe to the north east as well. A uh, wonderful place. So we climbed up there. I went with Anna Dillon. Um, I was taking pictures. She was sketching when she wasn't looking at badges for some reason she's got a fascination with badger sets um mm -hmm. and uh yeah no the views from the top are wonderful very windy up there obviously um it's a lone hill in the middle of nowhere um but again on a clear day the views are extraordinarily extensive probably as far as wales i'd imagine um and uh, you got other hill forts uh to the east so you, you've got uh Oh, see up near the Wessex Ridgeway, uh, Battlesbury. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Battlesbury Hill and Scratchbury as well uh, to the east of that. But they are within or on the edge of the danger area, as we talked about earlier for Salisbury Plain, and so we didn't take any aerial pictures of those. I, I've got a way of doing it. I know someone at Salisbury Plain who can grant permission, but I think for the purpose of our show, we really wanted to get Clay Hill in. So it's a wonderful day out. Um, it's quite a distance from where I live, but it was definitely worth the trip. Um, and Clay Hill itself kind of looks like an upturned pudding uh, with a couple of bites taken out of it. It's, it's literally mm -hmm. if you've got a kid to draw a hill, you know, kind of the upturned yeah. U shape. That's what it looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks actually quite out of place. And yeah. it's very distinctive uh, on the horizon many miles before you get there in a car. So, yeah, it was a really, really good trip. So... Regarding the UFO side of it, um, <laughs> I've been looking up at some of the previous sightings and also gathering a few comments from Twitter as well. So, again, it's on the Somerset Wiltshire border near Warminster, so there are, it's visible from several towns. And, of course, people in these towns know the direction of the hill. Uh, and it's been a UFO sighting hotspot, apparently, since the 1600s. <laughs> um so people frequently report strange objects spotted over the hill. Um, the most common one seems to be pulsating lights. Um, in fact, Warminster has its own designated national reporting centre for <laughs> UFOs. And uh, by pure coincidence, the pub's open quite late. <laughs> So, oh, um, don't want, I mean, Warminster is a lovely town with lovely people before I upset anyone. Sorry. Um, so back in the 1960s, the BBC started 
looking at Clay Hill, particularly um, a phenomenon which included um, some weird noises from the skies over the hill and and Warminster itself. Um, it was described back then as a strange shimmering light and in 1965 it was actually captured on film in its usual grainy manner that all UFO sightings yeah. seem to be. <laughs> um, fast forward to 2001, uh, there was a more detailed sighting uh, by locals which was reported um, by the locals as moving towards the hill and they, they, they said it was a slow moving bright light so not a helicopter of course uh, which um, which oh, I can't read my own writing um, which was spotted by a number of people also over in Trowbridge who reported three lights in a triangle formulation heading west towards either Clay Hill or Warminster and uh, so fast forward again quite recently to 2017 there was another ufo sighting over the hill uh, accompanied by a video from a resident in frome who said that the the object was between frome and clay hill um and then there was another ufo which was filmed by a local resident directly over clay hill again spotted from frome uh, they they had just finished performing with the the Frome Street Bandits at the Cheese and Grain Rum Festival. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no wonder they saw a UFO. Um, <laughs> can't even read that. Um, and they told uh, Somerset Live, oh, you'd never seen, I can't do the accent. Well, I'm, that was a good start, Eddie. Oh, you'd never it. seen anything like it before. <laughs> It was emitting green and red flashing lights and colours. That's a drone, right? Yeah, it green was you, it was you. So that's probably, do you know, I, I'm going to take my drone up there one night with a spotlight yeah. on and just get see if I can make the news. <laughs> 2018, uh, a sighting of several UFOs over the hill flying separately before joining and splitting again. Um, I'm definitely taking my drone up there. But, you know, there is consistency to this um and you know we, we can laugh and everything but i don't think i'd want to be up there in the middle of the night to be honest with you it's a lovely place lovely views but it's got a real kind of odd character about it you know yeah. every everyone you see there's normal um yeah. but the, the hill itself <laughs> but the hill itself it's obviously a quite a dark area you know warminster to the yeah. to the east but where it is it's obviously quite dark and it's it's also near Salisbury Plain um yeah whether that means anything or not but um so I, I I put a picture of it on Twitter um and someone described it as a buried spaceship which actually makes it <laughs> sound even more scary because it when you look at it um, when you see the pictures it does look kind of like a UFO dome thing that could be buried yeah um so there was also <clears throat> someone said let's have a look um I've got, again i've got my yeah so someone said it was i don't think i've read through all the comments you know um <laughs> well okay somewhere it said that it looked like uh, someone thinks it was where there there were two giants fighting one killed the other the other one covered himself in clay so again, you you could kind of imagine that after beer that doesn't I, I, that isn't alcohol free. I, I feel like I feel like there should be a lot of pubs around the area for all of these. Yeah, stories. again, I again, like, it's you know. it's a lot of a lot of stories, but I mean, you know, it's that it, I mean, it is near Salisbury Plain, yeah. and all these ones with the flashing lights have been since 2017, which have basically went since drones have been mainstream. Uh, but at the same yeah. time, some of them are quite, you know, I mean, the lights conjoining, that's clearly not drones or helicopters or something. And I can sort of envisage it. Uh, so someone on Twitter, as I said, said it was a buried spaceship. Uh, one of my other friends on Twitter lives four miles away and said it was formed, oh, yeah, formed by two fighting giants throwing <laughs> clay at each other. One was killed and the other just covered himself in clay and remained there. Um and someone says, 
uh, every day I spent many a night UFO spotting with friends and we saw plenty of aerial activity that was unexplained. So these these are normal people on Twitter who live nearby <laughs> and yep. are friends of mine. So, you know, can verify that they're, you know, not alcoholic or anything like that. These are these are modern day people. So something's clear something for a long time has clearly gone on at, at Clay Hill. Mm. Uh, whether or well, I mean, if it's flying and it's unidentified, it is a UFO. But, you know, whatever it is, there, there's something often that happens there, whether, you know, Sturford Mead Farm are having a bit of a laugh with people, I don't know. But, um, mm. yeah, it's mm. and, I, and I can see it when you go there. You see the pictures of it. It's a very odd hill. Um, yeah. It's very photogenic. It's very pretty just off the Mid Wilts Way. But, uh, yeah. yeah, obviously something not, not quite normal there. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and that's all I've got for Clay Hill. That's right. It's a fascinating little place for such a for such a small and very, as you say, you can tell by its contours. It's obscure mm. and almost out of place, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's just it looks like it, yeah. Even without seeing a picture of it from uh, what we're looking at now, mm. it's a very like someone's just plonked a little lump of blue tack on a flat it, piece of paper. It does look artificial, but yeah. it's not. It's too big. I mean. Mm. And this is not Silbury Hill. This is, you know, much, much bigger than Silbury Hill. And yeah, I think because yeah, yeah. they've because there are quarries on the southern side of it, it's yeah. also given it a very it looks like um sort of half if it didn't have those it would look like half an apple or half a tennis ball. Yeah. But with those it looks like half an apple that's had a little bite taken mm-hmm. out of it. So it's a very strange shaped hill. Yeah. But I've, uh, I've, yeah, I've, I've driven this, past it loads, but yeah. I've never ever never ever sort of been up it. It's going to be a, a nice addition to our exhibition. That, mm. uh, yeah, that's uh, that picture's in uh, being printed and framed as we speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're back in the garden, Ed. We're back in the. Uh, oh, back in this, the, yeah. We're back in the, back uh, in the, the background with the, the garden. So, um, YouTube comments. So let's just do this. Yeah. Uh, we did promise people that if they'd put a comment on YouTube, we'd uh, consider them for reading. Um, and this was going back to our Dartmoor episode. Yeah. Uh, so I'll ignore my own comment there. Uh, so uh, Simon Train says, we interrupt this podcast for pizza, because that's what happened with you, wasn't it? Your oh, food yes. was served at home. Oh, yes. Um, I remember seeing Dartmoor as a really nice place after watching Paul's video on YouTube of the Hater Tramway. Yeah, uh, I love Devon that. and Cornwall do have some lovely scenery. They They really do. They really, really do. Yeah, love Simon. Simon's a great guy. Simon's been following mm. us for years and years. Oh, yeah. Okay, proper railway man. He's got his own YouTube channel. He's got a good, good little following on um mm. on that as well. Keith M six zero three. Thank you for the episode. I come from South Devon and I've loved walking Dartmoor all my life. Southeast corner is my area. I could fill the screen with stuff about the area. For those interested, the Stover Canal started near what is now Stover Country Park, south of Bovey Tracy. Uh, went down to Newton Abbott on the Jetty Marsh Reserve and then down to Teenmouth uh, to be loaded for transportation at what is now New Quay Inn. I'll shut up now, he says. <laughs> Please don't yeah, shut brilliant. up. Yeah, brilliant. Good. But, the, but that's exactly it. And, and they took all mm. of that granite from up on Dartmoor, down that canal, and then to London. And they built mm. London Bridge, I think, using the, 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 the granite from mm. there. Wonderful. Yeah. So Davy941 will almost certainly be listening to this because he listened to his own comment being read out. So hello again, Paul and Headley, liking the new layout, uh, which we've ditched. Um, <laughs> why don't they preserve those these stone circles? It makes me sad that they are slowly disappearing. That is very true. Mm. Um, that was nice to have my comment read out. Headley, thank you. Another real good podcast. Thank you both. Oh, it's, it's, you see, these are the sort of people I like. Yeah, and he's right. In terms of the mm. stone circles, I think mm. we're at the point now where nothing will be wrecked further than what it already has been. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, the, the whole of the 1900s as a whole, mm. including late 1900s, we just demolished everything. We just built roads and yeah. whatever else and just trashed yeah. anything yeah. thereafter. But, yeah. Jim Champion, another regular here. Uh, usually I see some Headley Thorn images of somewhere around Oxfordshire, Wiltshire, and I'm inspired to go and visit. Oh, wow, that's great. People actually like my stuff and go out. Mm. This time, though, uh, this could go anywhere, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I managed to go somewhere before Headley did. I was talking about Dartmoor. 
Uh, about a week earlier I went to Two Bridges and we walked a short distance up to Wistman's Woods. From all the photos you see of it, you never see the context, which is that it's a tiny isolated patch of temperate rainforest in the otherwise wide open moorland. That is true, you see it down in the valley. Yeah. The trees. Apparently much more of Dartmoor used to be covered with this kind of woodland. However, I'm not yet read Guy Shrubsoul's book, yeah. uh, The Lost Rainforest of Britain. Yeah. It was pretty soggy on the day we were in Dartmoor, but avoided a real drenching. Yeah, not like me, I got drenched. Went in the afternoon to Princetown to find everything shut. And then the rain came in hard and we drove back down to Tavistock, where we went for a walk around the Walkham Valley next to the A38 between Tavistock and Plymouth, including the rather impressive newish cycle bridge where the Brunel Viaduct formerly stood. Last year we went to Brentnor. I love that. It's the one with the St Michael's Church on the top. Yeah. And that was well worth it. Been meaning to visit for ages and actually got round to it. Loads more to see and do around there and really ought to visit again this uh, time of year when it's less rainy. Totally agree. Absolutely lovely. <clears throat> Stuart Bridger, 5177. Thanks for the shout out for my comment in the last video. Again, I repeat. Yeah. <laughs> We've done quite a bit of uh, walking on Dartmoor. Stayed in Bovey Tracy a couple of years back. Superb walk up the tramway to Hayter and across Lusley and back down to more Hampstead track bed great oh, day Mor out. Morton Hampstead Morton Hampstead was the end of a uh -huh. railway I can't remember which one but we did it a long time ago end of a railway the terminus yeah. was in Morton Hampstead you can still go and see the warehouse in that now I think mm. Mm. Um, just moving on to the Coca-Cola there with me cool right uh, David Bassett 4577 uh, Lyford Gorge is well worth a visit if you go back to Dartmoor um, he's also put with the map of Dartmoor showing Mary Tavy where my grandparents lived and where I used to stay with them in the 1960s. Their graves are in the churchyard there when I last visited on the 29th of the 12th, 2022, on my way to Plymouth. The disused railway bridge and former Tate and Lyle Sugar Warehouse still sit at the corner of the main route through Tavistock and turning to Peter Tavy. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tavistock's got two. I can't, I won't name them, but the two abandoned railways going through the middle. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Merrick Blackmore 2916. Uh, Dartmeat, uh, good point here. Dartmeat is east of Two Bridges, so you'd have reached that before Two Bridges coming from Ashburton. Car park for Windy Post is called Pork Hill Car Park, that's right, just on the Tavy side of Merivale. A nice London financier moved to the area, he put nice inverted commas, donated to local MP and went to court to stop wild camping. After the ruling, he took down his website, oh, there's more here, so no one could contact to ask him for permission. Mm -hmm. DNPA have now decided they will appeal. Uh, yeah, so, and he's also mentioned the Stover Canal ran from Tain Race, oh, I can't pronounce T E I G N G R A C E, uh, Ventiford Basin. Oh, Tin Grace. Tin, 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 Tin Grace. Yeah. Tin Grace. The, the Tin, as in Tinmouth. It's called Tinmouth. Yeah, yeah Tinmouth. I got it. So Tinmouth. Yeah. You assume Tin yeah. Grace, I guess. So that's three things I've pronounced wrong <laughs> badly. I, I can't even get that right. The <laughs> granite tramway ran from Hayter, so there's the quarry, isn't there, at the top, yep. to Ventisford Basin. And he's right. I got the, uh, the two places I visited at the start, I got them around the wrong way in the podcast. Um, yeah. My yeah. Favorite. A uh, couple of small things. Keith Door 8521. Living in Plymouth, Dartmoor is my back garden. Oh, you lucky person. So my son's mm -hmm. at university in Plymouth and Plymouth, and if, if I was there, I'd be in Dartmoor every day. Yeah, um, yeah. Mind you, Plymouth itself is nice, obviously. Uh, so every other day. And finally, David Bassett, 4577 again, says lots of MOD live firing ranges, so probably drone flying over these would not be recommended. That's a, that's a valid point. Really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. Um, oh, so that reminds that. me of the point I was going to make of when I said I was at Tidworth. Mm. Even on that part where we hadn't got to the flags yet, they mm. still train. So we were just, mm. we parked the car mm. and there were soldiers in, hidden in the hedge. And they really? kind of, you, you walk past them and they just wave at you like that. It's just, but they're there with like, not, I assume they're not real guns, but who knows what they'll be. And they're just in the hedge. Oh, you know, you... camouflaged out. Very strange. Yes, that's normal in Didcot. We get that here in Didcot all the time, <laughs> just to keep keep the townsfolk uh, under control. So yeah. <laughs> right, that's all I've got. That is so, all I've got, Heavy. That... 
if you want to have a comment read out to our slightly small audience, but you know, if you want to have it read out, do comment in the was it you say the doobie doo below? The doobie doo below, yes. And for those um, people who are probably sensibly uh, listening on Spotify, Apple, Google, whatever, um, do get in touch with um, myself or Paul via Twitter. Is probably the best meth- method. So yeah. we're both easy to find on Twitter. Yep. You because of your fame, me because of my stupid name. So um, <laughs> do feel feel free to look us up. And if you've got any comments or questions, um, we'd like to read them out and discuss them. Yeah. So, yeah. And and as Headley always says, if you've made it this far, we appreciate your um, yes. viewer slash listenership. It's um, it's always a pleasure for us to just waffle about the landscape and have I've people listen to you here left at the end. Yeah. Probably just us, isn't it? It's probably just me and you, Headley. Yeah, it's exactly. just we, me could, and you. we could waffle on for another hour, and you know, we wouldn't lose any more viewers or, or listeners. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, speak to you next time in episode eleven. Yep. See you then. Cheers.